What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about where do bass go in the spring and how to catch them. Hopefully you guys have been following along the channel for uh, the last, well, more than the last few videos. But in the last few videos, we've talked about kind of the spring, early spring transition, done some spring fishing. Hopefully you guys got to see that uh, raw uncut video I did down, uh, down south in Florida, messed them up on a chatterbait. If you haven't already, check out some of those other videos. I'll leave them down below in the video description. You can go watch those. But we talked about early spring, now let's talk about spring. Now we're talking about full-blown spring transition. Where do these fish go? Where should I go? And how do I catch them? So we're gonna do a little bit of a review that the different types of fisheries, uh, and, uh, and then we'll cover some new stuff, talk about some baits and uh, key ways that I really like to search for them this time of the year. So let's get started. Spring fishing. It's amazing time to be out on the water. Warm weather, short sleeves, everything in the fishery is typically warming up. Now let me backtrack a little bit. Depending on where you are in the country, you know if you're ahead of the pre-spawn or, or, or way back, you're still under ice waiting for that ice to thaw. So you can apply this information uh, to where you are in the country. But for the most part, we're talking that transition, that spring transition into the spawn now beautiful out but like i said beautiful weather everything gets uh kind of active tomorrow through the entire week we have a whole weather system a whole front coming through gonna cool everything down gonna turn all the fishery that i'm on chickamauga all the backwaters into mud right now we got stained but um fishing this time of the year is usually really really good, especially if you've been cooped up in the winter, uh, uh, inside in the winter, all winter, you know, in the garage, in the shop, just kind of thinking about fishing. Now is the time to get out on the water. Like I said, those fish are moving through that spring transition. They're looking, their end goal is to uh, spawn, right? To get into those shallows, get into that warmer water, uh, wait for that moon, that full moon, which I think is March 18th. Don't quote me on it, but uh, that full moon's March 18th. Uh, new moon is April 1st, so uh, that's uh, just some just some info for you guys. But that full moon, that first full moon in March, you know these fish are typically looking to spawn. So if you've been catching them all winter out there on your main lake points, out there on your main transitions, your rock piles out in deeper water, now those fish are going to kind of progress through their transition into the backs of spawning bays. Now, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, a river system or a delta or a pond, all of this information applies. Uh, the fish will still move the same. They will use different things to move, different places to stop during the transition. But for the most part, that is the end goal, the spawn. That is spawning base. So if you're on a fishery, like I'm on a river system, you know, the TVA, the Tennessee River, uh, I'm looking for backwaters. I'm looking for stuff out of current, and I'm looking for hard rock, banks that uh, are facing the sun uh, for the most part of the day. Those banks are gonna warm up quicker. Those banks are gonna warm up uh, faster and stay warmer water uh, through this whole period. But I'm looking for flatter backwater stuff where those fish can get in that warm water and do their spawn. So it doesn't matter if you're on a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, a river system, or a pond, that's what these fish are gonna do. So let's talk about a highland reservoir. You guys know if you've been following the channel for a long time, highland reservoir, that's gonna be your real deep, typically clear water reservoir. It's gonna have real bluff walls. It's gonna have long fingers, long river arms with uh, main, like a main lake point that separates the two river arms. And then you have secondary points. And then hopefully close to one of your main lake points, you're gonna have a little cut in with uh, some shallower, less steep shoreline. You know, Highland Reservoirs, Typically, you have your bluff walls, real sheer, deep stuff. You know, you can go from like 25 to 90 uh, feet of water. So you're looking for something with less transition, a more gradual transition, something that's going to warm up quicker, and uh, and uh, that's where those fish are going to be going. So 
um, your main lake points, look for a spawning bay or a, a less deep, less sheer of an area close to those main lake points, and that's where those fish are gonna be transitioning to. Now, how do you catch them along the way? They're gonna use those secondary points, so not the main lake point, but those points that are working their way back into that spawning bay, they're gonna use those like step, stepping stones uh, along the way to eventually get into that bay and do their spawn. So if you're trying to catch them, you've been out there on that main lake point all winter, catching them in deeper water, start your process, start your progression back towards those secondary points and you will find the fish along the way. Now, if you have a secondary point that ha uh, is just better than others, rock piles, maybe it has some standing timber, uh, maybe the bait likes to uh, congregate around a specific point along that, transition, uh, that's going to be key because that's where you're going to catch the majority of your fish. Now also if you find that you're catching fish typically smaller than normal, backtrack your progression just a, a point or two because typically those males, you know, they get that first sense of warm weather, they're going to be running to the back and those females are going to be uh, just a little bit behind them. So if you're catching those smaller males, backtrack a little bit and you will find those bigger females. Lowland Reservoir, same type of deal, except for you don't have a lot of your bluff walls. You don't have a lot of your real long river arms. You're gonna have more humps and low spots out on your main body. Uh, and then you'll have little creek channels. And that's what they're gonna use as their highway to get back to, again, that spawning bait. It's all about spawning. It's all about bait fish. So if you can find bait fish, you know, a good food source near that uh, less steep, less real, you know, less, kind of sheer stuff, that is where you're gonna find those fish. So Lowland Reservoir, again, use those creek channels, find those little, that little sh uh, deeper contour line. They will use the deepest water they can along that contour line to use, like I said, like a highway uh, to get back into that spawning bay. Now I'm kind of going through this fairly quickly because we've covered it, we've covered it recently in like, I don't know, Last month or so, I did a video on, on where do fish go in early spring. A lot of this information will be there, so we're doing a kind of refresher, quicker refresher course, but um, natural lakes. Natural lakes typically are featureless. You know, you get offshore, there's a lot of just kind of do nothing water out there. And so if you can find uh, a rock pile or you can find a sunken boat or uh, a tree or something like that, those fish are gonna move there. I mean, you can have some of the best days of your entire season fishing that specific spot as those fish use that as a transition to get to their spawning base. Now that applies to all the different types of fisheries. You know, if you're on a lowland reservoir and along that creek channel, there's boom, the rock pile. You should be able to pick off fish off of that rock pile this entire next couple of months. As those fish transition into the backs, that's gonna be a key spot. And guess what? post-spawn as some of those deeper fish, the fish that don't stay shallow, they're gonna move back out deep. They're gonna use that same progression that they use going in to go out. And that, that rock pile is gonna really play, uh, pay dividends uh, post-spawn as well. But not to go too far off track, if you can find key pieces of structure along that transition point, uh, that transition, that progression that they're making their way into the back, that is key. So we talked about highland reservoirs, we talked about lowland reservoirs, uh, natural lakes, like I said, a lot of them are fairly featureless. If you can find rock, if you can find little creek channels, that's where you're gonna find those fish. A lot of the uh, natural lakes that we've fished, it's all about moving water in the spring uh, and those fish kind of run to it. Now, with that said, like I said earlier, this next week, it's all rain. That's gonna generate a ton of current uh, in the backwaters, main lake, main river system, lots and lots of moving water. If you were on a highland reservoir, lowland reservoir, a natural lake that has creeks, rivers, that kind of fast forwards this whole progression through this spring transition. And those fish are gonna head straight to the back, right to that moving water. Hopefully you guys have done your research on Google Earth or, or ran around your lake during the winter with low water conditions and seen some of these key pieces of structure, of cover that are along this transition. And now those fish are gonna run right to the back and hopefully you can pick them off on that key piece of cover or structure that you found in low water when those fish are up there. Now, 
perfect case scenario, perfect world, you find a spawning bay next to that creek channel. You know, if there's a little offshoot, little flat area, like a little bay right there off of the main lake, key, uh, you know, creek channel, that's gonna be money. Again, use your electronics, use your side imaging, and really find, spend some time to find those key pieces if you haven't already, waypoint them, and then, like I said, stepping stones, fish your way to them. Start on that secondary point, that next secondary point, that next secondary point, and you guys will find those fish. We talked about highland, lowland, natural. Ponds, same, it's really, ponds, um, you know, a pond can be anything from a small pond to a fairly, a few acre, you know, small lake, if you will. You know, start at your deeper water, start at your dams. Uh, if you have creek channels, obviously fish those. A lot of guys are fishing from shore, so, um, you know, fish what you can. But again, your progression is typically gonna work yourself away from that deeper water into the shallower water that warms up quicker, and that's where your fish are gonna be spawning. So again, this time of the year, it's all about movement. It's all about moving baits. The, the weather's warming up. The, uh, the water temps are warming up. Everything in the lake is getting more and more active. So when I'm fishing for these fish, it's all about moving baits. And I have a handful of baits down here for you. Um, but for me, it's my confidence baits. It's gonna be the A-Rig, a glide bait, a chatter bait, a lipless crank bait, and a square bill. I mean, that's it. I'm not really thinking about finesse unless I can't catch them uh, on the reaction. Then I'm gonna go to that rock pile or I'm gonna go to that specific piece that I might have found along the way and then I'll worm it with a Nico rig or a shaky head or a big Texas rig, something like that. Um, yeah, so it's all about the moving baits. You know, I love throwing, I don't know if you guys can see this, uh, this water right here. Now I'm back kind of tucked into this pocket. I don't know if you guys can see, but it is straight up ripping out there. You know, probably 20, 20 plus mile an hour winds. So kind of hidden behind uh, this, little, this little wind barrier, if you will. But uh, I love throwing red baits this time of the year. You know, this water, it's kind of stained. Again, you get those storms coming in, kind of churns up the water. That current really muddies up the water. Um, but a red chatterbait works really, really well this time of the year. Now, I typically don't start off with the chatterbait. Typically, I like to throw the A-Rig. You guys know that. Uh, if you guys watched any of the uh, previous videos in this series, you guys know that I love throwing the A-Rig, love throwing the glide bait, the lipless crank. But uh, a chatterbait, especially in stained water, just that added vibration, that real loud thumping, those fish can feel it on their lateral lines and they straight munch it. But I'm usually, especially if I'm in a highland reservoir, lowland reservoir, uh, typically those bodies of water have clearer water than let's say a, a, a river system or you know maybe a pond with uh, some, some runoff or something. But I'm thinking clear water and that's when I'm going with the A-Rig. It's just an easier search bait. Again, one of the reasons why I'm not really focused on the finesse setup while I'm trying to find these fish is I'm, it's, it's all about moving. It's all about the reaction. It's all about covering water from point to point to point and uh, once you find those key pieces of structure, you know, off of this secondary point and off of that secondary point and this little creek channel, now you start to develop a pattern and we like to call that a milk run. So you hit spot one, spot two, spot three, spot one, spot two, spot three, and then you can run between those three or four or five or eight, 10 key areas because uh, these fish are going to turn on and on, on and off and they're also going to be transitioning. You know, you might hit spot one at 10 in the morning but those fish don't get there until 12.30. And guess what? Then they're gonna hit spot two at 2.30 as they move along. So you gotta kind of figure out the progression, but once you will, or once you do, you will be able to stay on those fish throughout that progression. Um, but the A-Rig, again, it's all about moving. It's all about finding those fish. If you can find fish that are active on bait, if you can find fish actively feeding on bait, there's no better bait out there to start with than the A-Rig. Two more for you. The glide bait, 
the lipless crank. Some of my biggest fish ever have been on the lipless crank in the, the pre-spawn, that whole spawn transition as those fish are moving shallow from deep. But since we're in this area, I don't want to uh, necessarily hang up, but you can see there's lay downs. So let's pretend that this is a spawning bay. You know, you got your main, main point out here, main lake point out here, your secondary point, um, and these fish are gonna be moving into the backs. So I'm looking over here, I got some riprap, got some rocks, some real hard shoreline. I got some dock pilings over here, kind of a mud bank with some uh, lay downs. The lay downs are great because those fish will use those as ambush points, as cover along their, their transition, along their progression. So I'm gonna use the glide bait to really pick apart the different pieces of cover along the way. You know, these fish, especially the big fish, they're looking for the best pieces of, uh, of structure to, uh, to sit on, to be around, to feed off of during this transition. So that's when I'm gonna use the glide bait. You know, it, it fishes a lot slower than a chatterbait, than an A-rig. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the slowest. This and the lipless are gonna be the two slowest those are gonna be the, the baits that I use to really pick apart a spot, but that A-Rig and that jackhammer, that chatter bait, that's what I'm gonna be using mostly for my search baits. Now, we talked about the dingy water. If it is crystal clear water, that's when I'll go away from the chatter bait, and that's when I like to throw like a, a 3.8 or a 4.3 Kitek, something maybe on an underspin, add a little bit of flash if you're fishing around bait fish there's something about adding that, that flash, adding that blade. You just get more bites when you add that flash. It just makes that bait stand out from the hundreds of thousands, millions of other little bait fish. Uh, but if I'm fishing clearer water, that's when I set the chatterbait down and I pick up uh, either an underspin or a, just a, a 4.8, 4.8, 4.3, 3.8, 4, one of those three size swim baits uh, with a, just a normal swim bait head on it, either the tactical finesse head or the Matt Allen head, but something that's got the exposed hook. If I'm fishing around cover, if I'm fishing around grass that's freshly coming up, that's when I'll switch back over to like the flashy swimmer. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You get that flash, but you're also weedless. Guys, springtime, if those storms come in, head to the back. You know, these fish will chew when that rain starts dumping, right? So when these, this water starts moving, when your fishery starts getting, you know, moving, that water level starts coming, rising up, these fish will feed. They will take their nose right to the bank and get shallow. You could actually throw a square bill if you wanted to switch that out from a lipless crank, but these fish will get shallow and they're gonna move. They're gonna move to that, that new, fresh, incoming water and feed. If you're fishing after the storm, the lake's kind of settled down, the water's kind of cleared up, go with these baits you guys will have a ton of success guys this is the best time in my opinion this time all the way through uh right to up to the spawn is your best chance of catching the biggest fish of the season as these fish are bulking up they're feeding up they're full of eggs especially the big females full of eggs now is the chance to catch your new PB. Again, down below in the video description, I'll link all the baits, some favorite colors, and then just some little key notes about the different transition points, the different types, bodies of water. But guys, I hope this helps. I hope this gives you the confidence to get out on the water. You know, if it is raining, spring storms are great to fish in. Throw on some rain gear, but get out, make some casts, and you guys have a shot at catching your new PB. As always, guys, Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.